And welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Battery Insiders podcast. My name is Simon Engelke. I'm the founder and chair of Battery Associates. And I'm very delighted to have here, live from the European Battery Show in Stuttgart, we have the CEO of Theron with us, Dr. Ulrich Emis. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much, Simon, for the invitation. So today we're going to talk about SOFA batteries, but maybe before we go into that, if you maybe could start a bit with the vision and the mission of Theon for our listeners. We all want a carbon neutral future, and this future will be electric. And an electric future needs sustainable battery. And that is exactly what is our target, to be a world-class high mass production producer of lithium sulfur batteries. And our target is to triplicate the gravimetric energy density up to 1,000 watt hours per kg by at the same time cut the cost by factor three down to 40 euros per kilowatt hours and at one third of the CO2 footprint. Very good. I appreciate these numbers already. And then if you can talk a bit more about sulfur-based batteries. It's one of these technologies I think probably most have heard of it but maybe don't know too much about. So maybe if you could introduce this topic a bit, why do you care about this technology? Why are you trying to commercialize it? Yeah. Disruption in battery technology goes through the materials. And if you look to the, the, the cost uh, part of a battery, 70% is material cost. And if we want to co cut the cost significantly, we have to attack the cathode material. And that is what our, what our co-founder Marek started over 10 years ago to screen the materials. And he found very fast, sulfur is a fantastic material. We can get rid of all this difficult to mine and to source materials like nickel, manganese, cobalt. Um, and uh, sulfur is an abundantly available material worldwide. It's a waste material, mainly from the oil industry. It's cost nearly nothing, only 20 cents per kg compared to 20 euros per kg of state-of-the-art cathode material. So very important for the cast cutting. Second advantage, it has a very high specific energy of over 1,000 milliampere hours per gram. This is five times more than state-of-the-art cathode material. And this is the key element for our batteries. And of course, lifetime, etc. is also a topic there. Um, you mentioned already earlier sustainability and like your sustainability and your cell chemistry. So maybe you could compare it a bit to the other chemistries people are familiar with, like LFP, NMC, etc. Yeah. yeah. If we compare the supply chain of LFP or NMC, you have always mines in South America, Australia, or China. Then you transport these materials to China. Then 90% of this cathode material is processed there. Specifically, NMC, you need a two step calcination, which is very energy intensive. You don't have that at all with sulfur because it's waste, it's there. And the big companies that don't know what to do with this material. So from, a, from an energy consumption perspective, the starting point is in our case zero compared to a very high energy consumption of all the all, all other raw materials. From a process uh, perspective, our processes need very low amount of energy and very short process time. In some cases, only 20 milliseconds. And this means also we do not need big coating equipment, drying uh, dryers. Um, so we save a lot of energy also in the processing of the sulfur. Interesting. And I think I was speaking on another podcast with Sebastian Wolf from PowerCo about this topic of how you know byproducts can be really important in the battery industry. We have seen this with LFP, for example, which uses byproducts on the manufacturing, uh, sorry, of the of the building industry in China. So that's why LFP also became very cheap in China because they had a lot of these cheap byproducts from from construction industry. Maybe just a quick follow up question on the on the sulfur. Is it a lot from the European sulfur like body product? Is there a lot of waste in Europe or is it in other regions where you have a lot of these byproducts? This is a nice thing from a geopolitical, geodemocratic point of view. Sulfur is available everywhere. So we don't depend on these supply chains I just mentioned. And everywhere where you have a refinery, you have mountains of sulfur waste. And so we are we do not need recycling. We are the upcyclers. We make waste to value. And this is a very important, important argument. If all the batteries in 2030, 8 terawatt hours, would be produced with sulfur, we would need 6% of sulfur waste. So there is still 
plenty of sulfur around and for everyone accessible. Mm-hmm. And of course, you still have lithium and things like that as well. Yeah. Um, so already, we spoke a lot about the supply chain. Maybe we can go a bit more depth of um, the complexity of supply chain. Because I think that's really fascinating. And you already mentioned some things there. And also how quickly it could be scaled. You know, if you say it's successful and now you have a lot of sulfur batteries, how easy is it actually to sort of scale yeah, yeah. it? Let's have a look to the whole production technology to build a battery cell. Um, 80% of the production processes of state-of-the-art cell assembly is exactly the same like in our case. What is different is the first part, the 20% of um, mixing, coding, drying, calendary. This we replace. And, 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 and now going one step further uh, upscale, we don't we don't need the processes in um to 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 make out of the raw material a cathode active material and that's what we do in house so we are completely independent and that means it is scalable so we don't rely of, uh, on external partner to make the sulfur prepared for our process to make it purer we can take it as it is which is a big advantage to scale to giga or terawatt hour capacities. Mm, fascinating. And then maybe also as a final kind of question by being here at the European Battery Show, um, look at this technology. What are some of the opportunities you see and maybe also some challenges in Europe for this technology? Um, the whole battery industry is a material war. So who has access to the best materials and to the right materials uh, from a cost perspective and supply chain perspective, but as well from a specific energy perspective will be the winner in the future. What we see now today is a, a big overcapacity in the supply chain that brings the cost down, which is very, very dangerous because everyone is now focusing on cheap LFP materials. I think it, this is the wrong way for Europe. We cannot rely on these materials. We need, as it was done 30 years ago, from nickel cadmium to lithium iron, to triplicate the capacity, we now need to be on the next step to the next di- disruption with new materials which are ac- accessible for all of us. And this is a big chance for us in Europe. Fantastic. Now, Ulrich, I really appreciate you taking your time, sharing some insights on sulfur, which I think is interesting technology. So very excited to hear more with Theon, what you're going to develop based on that. And I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you. And then also thank you all for listening for the Battery Insiders podcast here live from the European Battery Show. If you're interested in more of these kind of episodes, please subscribe on our YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to any of your podcasts. And yeah, you can also go on batteryinsiders.com to kind of um, subscribe there to get notified about future episodes. This is this. My name is Simon Inker, founder and chair of Battery Associates. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks so much.